Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's another Sunday fun day here at Gym City Welding, and today we're bolting a body cart finally on this car. You guys know it's been a long time. I made this thing forever ago, but today we're finally gonna bolt it on the car. I'm gonna give you the skinny on what it takes to do something like this from the welding, fabricating side, a full material list for everything you need, and uh, just a couple pointers from stuff that I find when I'm putting this thing on the car. So, all that and more on this episode. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, so let's uh, briefly talk about the kit itself, and then uh, I'll get to the whole time-lapse deal on bolting this thing up. But uh, so let's go over some of the parts right off the rip. So first thing, you guys, those of you that have followed the channel for a long time, remember seeing this kit, or what I'm calling a kit. This is something I built, and I'm realizing that some of my viewers don't necessarily watch the videos in order, which is fine. So if this is your first time seeing this, well, here you go. So first things first, I actually made the legs uh, first. These are just six inch casters with a one by three by two uh, C channel that I've welded a two inch ID box tubing on. And I'm using five eighths uh, nuts, uh, bolts. And uh, I know these things are rusty, but that's okay. I, I've had them outside forever and uh, just finally getting to it. but. The point is the legs themselves, um, I built them specifically for this body. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now that if I was to do this over again, the one change that I would make is I would make these legs sleeved so I could raise them up and down for different heights. And that's what those longer pieces are back there for. I'll go over that here in just a little bit. Uh, but anyways, I built these for the same length. And when it comes to bolting it on the 64, you've got a few options about where you can bolt this kit to. Um, so I'll go over that a little bit more later on. Uh, next, these I call spanners. I don't really know what you wanna call them, but they basically run through the wheel well area of the body. So they're gonna run from driver's side to passenger side. And again, two inch ID box tubing welded in across. That way they slide on these with uh, the 5 8 nuts and bolts. Pretty straightforward stuff. That way, those portions can actually slide this way, and the tubing that you'll see here in a second actually slides forward and backwards through those. So the idea behind this whole kit was that I was trying to make it as universal as I possibly could um, because I would like to use this not only for this car but any future uh, project down the road. Plus, this kit could be used to bolt a X-Frame 2 or G-Body or Caddy or whatever you want for frame wraps. So, something to think about. Up next, you'll see these large, uh, excuse me, these long pieces here down the center. Those are going to span the full length of the car from front to back all the way. And that's what's going to tie the four legs together in conjunction with these two pieces here. Now, as far as length goes on all of this stuff, uh, this long piece that you see is approximately 10 foot. The shorter piece you see is approximately seven foot and it's two inch um, OD. And then I have a sleeve that I've made that slides over the long piece, which is two inch ID. That way this piece can slide in here and then bolt right there and right there as you see. So trying to make it to where this thing is as long as possible and then I can trim it down as I need or just keep it, excuse me, keep it long for when I do other vehicles down the road. So a lot of this is trial and error. I did a lot of research online before I made this uh, body cart and really couldn't find a whole lot of specifics on length and stuff like that. So um, as a matter of fact, my main inspiration for this whole kit comes from K from the Doors. What I want to do, because the life is only one time. I found out that I can get passion from the whole idea. 
I can promise if I never met Law Lightning, I will not be here. The Law Lightning saved me life. So if you're familiar with her and uh, what her business is, um, she has a body kit that they've made that is similar to this, and I just kind of took inspiration from that and made it my own in my own little way. That's pretty much it. That's what's going to be, uh, that's what I'm going to use to set this body down onto the ground. That way I can roll it up in a trailer and get it back home. So without further ado, let's switch to the time lapse and bolt this baby up. So here we go. Hey, so just a heads up for everyone that's following along at home. When you go to bolt these things up, make sure you don't bolt both of the legs up uh, first before actually bolting one up and then sliding the spanner between the two uh, first because you'll find that you'll have to take it apart and redo it again. So as you can see right there, I bolted one leg up, added the spanner, now I'm bolting up the second leg. Okay, everyone, so this is what we're looking at so far with the rear. Pretty straightforward. It bolts up to the uh, tail pan of the trunk. Of course, you could see mine has some pretty extensive rust and of course all that's gonna get replaced. But the idea here is that it's, I've made it to where it can bolt up to the rear of the body section. Um, and of course you've seen in the time lapse how those just sleeve on. You wanna make sure that center portion right there in the middle is centered on this bar. That way it can be centered to the car. That way when you go to put your center long pieces, they're gonna line up just fine. Uh, one thing to take note though, I want everybody to understand, I used 5 8 bolts on these because the front body mount area has 5 8 holes. Now, on the rear, uh, you'll have 7 16 14 cage nuts. Hey everyone, so I'm actually editing the video and realizing that I made a mistake when I was talking about this part of the body cart uh, body mount holes. So all the body mount bolts uh, bushings and all that sort of thing are 7 16 14 um, when you take the bushing out and all those things the hole will actually be um, large enough to fit a 5 8 bolt so on the front I ended up using the 5 8 and on the rear I ended up using the 5 8 but just remember the original bolt size for the bolts for the body are 7 16 14 that's important don't don't get that confused okay all right, back to the show. Cage nuts, if you're going all the way to the rear like I did. This car has extensive rust in the back and mine were completely uh, busted, rotted out. So basically I just removed what was left of them and used the 5 8 hole that's underneath that cage nut to just go ahead and use 5 8 bolts. Now uh, you can also use uh, the 7 16 14 bolts for those holes. Just make sure the washers are uh, gonna work for that size as well. So that's the rear. So now I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and add the center span and uh, get the front bolted up. So here we go. All right, so now we're adding the spanners to the center portion. Uh, you see the back was still pretty loose. I hadn't tightened anything down yet because I wanted to make sure I had plenty of wiggle room to slide everything in. Uh, now we got the center portion bolted in. Uh, those bolts are uh, tight, hand tight for the moment. I'm going to tighten them down afterwards, but you see how everything slides together. It moves forward and backward both directions. And uh, obviously it helps to have a floor jack because it's starting to get pretty heavy with all the crossbars on it. But the important thing is to make sure that everything is square front, back, left, and right. As you see in just a second when I tap on that center bar and get it squared up and everything should be good to go. Okay, everyone. So we're finally done with the time lapse and this is what we got. So as you saw in the time lapse, basically everything can move um, on two different directions. It can go forward, backwards, and then of course left and right. Now everything's nice and tight now, secure, locked into place. Everything's bolted into place. As you can see, I got the, what I call the spanner right down the middle. Uh, again, that was uh, 10 foot and seven foot. And as you can see, quite a bit of overhang, 
uh, just as much on the back that I can trim off or, you know, keep it universal and just be able to slide this thing forward for different uh, projects. So let's talk about the back. And this is where my original plan kind of went uh, a little sideways. Grab a bucket to sit on here. So if you recall, I talked about buying earlier. I talked about buying these pieces right here. So these are extra leg materials and forgive me, I misquoted the dimensions on that. Those are an inch and a half by three inch, not two inch, inch and a half by three inch. Uh, these particular pieces are happen to be over 30 inches long. So I got them super long, that way I can trim them down. But the whole point of this whole conversation about these stupid pieces, this was originally supposed to be bolted right here, right at that where it bolts to the uh, body mount on top of the spring pocket. And I ended up going back here. Why did I go back there? Because when I originally built these things to go in this location, I built them too short. They, were long, they weren't long enough. I actually took all these measurements for this whole entire project while the body was still on the frame. So I kind of just made a guesstimation. And I, to be honest with you, I got pretty close. They're only about four inches short. Uh, but that's no big deal, whatever. I'll uh, show you a little picture of a 61 uh, bubble top that's on a similar design and is bolted to the rear. So, why is that important? Well, I wanted to bolt it here uh, after this is replaced. Sorry, this thing's drifting on me. After this is replaced, I wanted to bolt that upright on there. <laughs> that way when I cut out the rear trunk pan, it still has something to support the body right here. But in a way, this is kind of a blessing in disguise because I've got to replace this to go to the new floor. So by having it bolted up here, that allows me to remove this whole entire section and not compromise uh, any safety or structural integrity, integrity in the car. So again, kind of a blessing in disguise because now I'm gonna make two more and uh, make them plenty long enough. That way they can bolt up right there in the middle. Uh, something else that I wanted to uh, share with everybody, <laughs> don't let your post sit outside in the rain and get rust on them because it does make it a little more difficult to slide them. I could always spray them down with some lubricant or something like that, but whatever. It's, it's done now. It's bolted up. This thing is rock solid. If you move it, it moves the whole body. And uh, yeah, so the casters. Let's talk about casters because in the original video, I kind of went over these briefly. These are four wheel swivel. So all four of them will swivel. I didn't want to get in a scenario where two were locked and two were swivel because my garage is pretty small from what you guys have seen. So I need to be able to turn this thing on a dime uh, whenever I'm moving around in the garage. Uh, casters, these are uh, Viver brand, but I did not buy these new. I actually bought these off Marketplace. So if you're in the market to do this project, if, you, if somebody at home is wanting to do this, get on Marketplace, find you a set of casters. They're super cheap and uh, make this project uh, work for you. So that's where I'm at with this. I'll probably, the next thing we'll be doing is sitting this thing down on the ground and getting it ready for the trailer and take it home. But you, all of you at home, won't see that until the next episode of Jim City Welding. So I'm gonna set this thing back up. Got a couple little things I wanna talk about and then I'll cut you loose and uh, hang tight. Here we go. Okay, so uh, last but not least, something I wanted to tell you is uh, those of you that have been watching the channel here for like, let's say the past probably two months or so, maybe a month and a half, have seen a QR code in the beginning of the video and I'll show a picture of that right there. That QR code. So those of you that have not scanned it or even those of you that have, basically what that does is that is a link tree that takes you to all my social media stuff and uh, how to get a hold of me, how to find me, because I always ask, I have people ask me, um, hey, I see you sell parts sometimes or you might do work or whatever. How can I get a hold of you? Well, that's a good way to get a hold of me. Uh, it's so difficult for me to answer all the messages on um, the YouTube stuff just because it's, I can't hardly keep up with it sometimes. But anyways, that has a link tree and it will send you to all of my, all of my social media.
But also what you'll notice is on my link tree is a link to an Amazon um, affiliated account. Now, it's not like I'm, I'm not trying to sell prod, uh, products or anything like that. Basically, I've had people ask me, hey, um, you know, how do I send something to the channel? How do I help out the show? Uh, maybe with, you know, a small tool, small purchase, something like that. So basically what I've tried to set up is kind of like a Patreon. It's not, I wouldn't call it a Patreon because I don't want people to send me money. I don't want uh, any financial money exchange, anything like that. And I appreciate people that want to do that, but I'm quite frankly, I, I, I just don't want to get into that. But what I have done is I've set up an Amazon um, and from time to time, I'll add things to it that I use in a garage or uh, would like to have in the future. And most everything on there, I think, is like 20 bucks and under. So for those of you that have asked, how can I support the channel? How can I send something? How can I have a Patreon uh, to help out the channel? That's how you do it. You click on that uh, QR code. It takes you to the link tree. You click on the Amazon. Anything that you find on there that you would like uh, me to have on the channel and like me to use and give you a shout out for supporting me and supporting the show uh, All you got to do is just click on the buy buy it and send it It'll automatically send it to me. No need to do an address or anything like that um, It knows how to get a hold of me and how to find me. So I just kind of wanted to let everybody know that's what that's really about and again, that's another way to check out um, Facebook Instagram all those things for all of you who haven't uh, followed me on any of the other social media platforms. Um, last but not least, uh, something else is, have you guys seen Brent Greer's uh, Pitbull Hydraulics page? He is now making wishbone rear and rear nine inch axle uh, housings uh, packages for 65 and 66 Impala. So that's pretty big news in, in my world because the 65 and 66s don't really get necessarily as much love as the 58 to 64s, but you know, beautiful cars. I would love to have one myself. Um, but Brent's stepped out of the box and he's making a custom rear end for these cars now. So be sure to check his page. Uh, I'll post up like a little picture here or something like that, probably from his Facebook. And you can check him out if you have a 65 or 66 Chevy Impala, Biscayne, Bel Air. Uh, what it broke was it Brookwood I, whatever the wagon version was anyways check him out if you're in the market for a rear end for your 65 to 66 Impala um, so that's it that's it for this episode I thank you very very much for sticking through with me all the time lapse and talking stuff but I appreciate you supporting the show uh, please like share subscribe tell your friends and uh, I look forward to seeing all of you on the very next episode of Gem City Welding. Take care.